check this out. We have a very simple web application in front of us that looks like it's just a blog post page. We do have a my account page, which once I click, it asks me to log in. I can log in as me and of course everything works fine. We also see our email right over here. If I log back out, you can also go back here and see that we also have a forgot password page. And here is where I can put my username, click submit, and it will send me a password reset link. Over here, if I hit refresh on my inbox, you can see, hello, please follow the link below to reset your password. And it gives me a link, which if I follow, I can reset my password to my account. Now, would you believe me that there is a critical vulnerability here, which allows me to take over anyone's account with just this password reset functionality. And for this issue, I was actually rewarded $1,000, but let me know in the comments down below after you see the vulnerability, was it worth it? Now, let's go with the video. But oh, before we get started, if you see the subscribe button, please click it right now because it will mean a world to me. I make a lot of educational content and you subscribing support the channel quite a lot. Also, if you want to take this a step further, check out my Ultimate API Android app hacking course, which is on a discount for quite a lot. It teaches you everything you need to know, as well as my game hacking course, which also includes some example cheats. And it's also on a very much 50% discount as well as my Ultimate Bug Bounty course. All of them are in the description. Now let's go with the video. So you might be confused from what I've told in the beginning of the video. What is the vulnerability here? Well, I'm glad you asked that and let me explain to you what is going on. First of all, I'm going to be using Burp Suite, which is a program or a proxy, which allows me to capture the requests and send them over here to repeater so I can modify them and send them again. But don't worry. Let me go back out here before I even sent the password reset link to myself. And I will go back here, turn on the Foxy proxy so I can intercept the requests and then I will submit this request. I can go back here and I can disable the Foxy proxy. Over here, if I go to proxy and HTTP history, you should see this request is right over here and it's being captured. So what I can do is I can right click on it, send this to repeater and now we can play with it. This is how it kind of looks like. We have a CSRF and the CSRF token looks just fine. It is a basic protection and we have the username. It is my username, which I've entered. There is also a PHP session ID, which gives us that this is a PHP website. So nothing out of the ordinary. We can go back here and hit refresh and we can see that we also received this other one. And if we take a look at the token, it does look different. So what I firstly thought of doing was maybe modifying the host. Maybe that would do the trick. So what I've done is I essentially just changed this host thing to maybe add a Web Security Academy 2. Of course, this is a... This is not a real website. This is just an imitation of a website, but the vulnerability worked exactly like this. So if I send this, uh, I get a, you know, invalid host message. So it didn't work for me either. But if I remove the two, I can still send a request and obviously I will receive it right here. Again, the tokens are different. What I always do is I like to play with password reset issues because those are the ones which bring you a lot of money. Plus, people tend to screw them up a lot especially with vibe coding we see nowadays. So another thing I wanted to try is to maybe submit two different usernames to get maybe a parameter pollution so that one username, maybe both of them receive, you know, the same link. Maybe that would work. So I tried to copy this and put the victim's account, which is Carlos. Uh, and yeah, if I sent this, uh, it did work. So if I hit the refresh, okay, there is my, there is my link so I can copy it open it up in a new account and over here we can see that we can update the username so maybe let's put carlos and yeah we get the invalid token so i was genuinely stuck i didn't know what to do at this point but i did remember that race conditions vulnerabilities do exist and if you know about race conditions you probably have some spark sparkling ideas in your head but in your next research i genuinely want you to try this because you'll be surprised to see how many websites actually screw this up so let me show you what I've done. I've realized that there is no point in me doing this. So what I wanted to do now is I wanted to try something very specific. So let me add the second request also to the repeater so I can actually group them all. So right click on it, uh, add to group and create a new group. So I can put both of them in here. Actually, just a little reference for you. If you send this one to the repeater and you hit send, I think you will be updated to HTTP2 and only then you can add it to the group. I don't know, it's just how burp is working. I think it's a bug, but regardless, now it should all be HTTP2 and it should be all working fine. So why did I add them to the group? Well, as you can see, both of them are same username. So what I did is I over here and I wanted to send these two requests at the exact same time. I wanted to send them in parallel. So so both of these requests should hit this, this server right over here at the exact same time. So let's send them. And if I go back here and if I hit a refresh, you should see that, uh, it, that the requests are relatively sent at the same time. It's not actually the same time, but there is a second off. Okay, we'll just try it again. 
So I can do this all day long, and of course nothing will work. If I hit refresh, always the tokens will be the same. My idea was to essentially send a request, which would, you know, give me same token in two links, but of course that doesn't work. But you might have noticed that there is a PHP right over here, PHP session ID. So this might be what is actually happening. So we're sending two different requests with the same session, hence why they're being treated not actually at the same time, but quite in a sequence. So this one will be treated first and then this one would be treated the second. However, what we want is for them to all both be treated at the exact same time. So how do we do that? Well, we need to update the session ID as well as a CSRF token. That's what we need to do. One of the ways to do it is to literally go back here, uh, go out and over here, we can go back uh, to cookies inside data and just clear out the cookies. Literally do that. And if I hit reload now, we can still fill in this data, but we can turn on the proxy again, submit this request. And now if you check into the burp, it will be a different session and a different CSRF token. And that will be right here. So send the repeater. And as you can see, let me just X, X this one out. So as you can see this and this do not match as well as the CSRF token as well. So none of these CSRF tokens match. So now we have a different session for a different request. Let's send it again. Oh, actually it's already HTTP2, no more, no need to send it again. So now if I go here and send this in parallel, if I go back here, hit refresh, you should see that these are indeed the same hashes or the tokens which we need to reset the password. So what we need to do now essentially is to just go back to burp and just update the username to a different user. So let's update this to Carlos. Let's send this. Let's wait for the request to show up here. That's it. Let's open it up. Let's update the user from Wiener to Carlos and you see invalid token. So what went wrong? Well, after a bit of playing around, I thought that I was dumb. I thought that this is actually what, it's, what you're supposed to do, but no, uh, actually, let me, re let me update the username back to myself. It's supposed to be the second request, not the first one. So second request, go to Carlos and now send it. So the first one needs to be your username and the second one needs to be Carlos. I don't know why, but that's just how it worked also on the actual web page and also on this web page. Yeah, I don't know. It's maybe the same library that they're using for parsing this, but regardless. So right now go to the link we received, open it up in a new tab, go back here to update from Wiena to Carlos. And as you can see, all of a sudden it worked. Yeah, you might actually need to try this a couple of times for it to work, but eventually it should work. Let's update the password to 1234. Let's click submit. Uh, let's update this to Carlos. Update password. Let's go to my account. And let's log in as Carlos. And would you look at that? We have been logged in as Carlos. And there is also the admin panel, which allows us to delete ourselves. And there you go. So this is the vulnerability I found. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video and let me know in the comments what do you think about the payout for this issue. Uh, in my opinion, 1000 could have been a little low because this wasn't actually categorized as critical. It was categorized as high, but in the end I found the vulnerability and it was literally like three days ago. So this is a very nice Christmas present for me. So thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe, stay responsible, buy my courses in the description, and as always, peace.